Hi, I'm Nikki Lowe, and welcome to the Wisdom for Working Mums podcast show, where I share insights and interviews that support women to combine their family, work, and life in a more successful and sustainable way. Welcome to this episode. I'm your host, Nikki Lowe, and today I'm sharing all about how to find the freedom to flourish as a working mum. And if you're listening to this episode when it launches, it's Mother's Day week here in the UK, and I wanted to give you a gift because as mums, we absolutely deserve some gifts. And I wanted to give you a gift that lasts longer than just Mother's Day. I wanted to give you the gift of finding your freedom to flourish. So in this episode, I share my five-step approach to finding the freedom to flourish. And if you stay tuned till the end, I have a very special gift for you that will help you implement what I'm sharing. By now, you probably know the story of what inspired me to create Wisdom for Working Mums. Just before I gave birth to my first child, I thought I was going to have the experience that people like Beyonce did. I remember hearing her being interviewed about being connected to her strength and power when in childbirth and it kind of awakening this power within her. And I kind of imagined that was how my birth experience and my kind of journey into motherhood would be. You know, I did all the hypnobirthing and I was ready to do the most natural thing in the world with power and ease. But I experienced a very high risk pregnancy. I then ended up with um, quite an extensive labor that turned into an emergency C-section. And I then ended up giving birth to a baby who had a hole in his heart. And let's just say that whole experience didn't leave me feeling very empowered. At five weeks old, my son was described as failing to thrive which is just a term that I still quite say without my own heart breaking a little. He was using more energy to pump blood around his heart when he was feeding than the energy he would take when he was feeding. So it was a term that they now luckily have stopped using, this failing to thrive term. But the truth is that as a new mum, I too was failing to thrive. My son at um, about seven weeks old was approved for open heart surgery. His hole in his heart was so big and it was in a place that they didn't expect it to close. So um, we were under um, Birmingham Children's Hospital and they were, he was approved for surgery, which, you know, with a, a, a tiny newborn and it's your first baby, you have no idea what you're doing, but this precious thing in the world. Um, to hear that news was just devastating. But thankfully, he started to defy the doctor's expectations and his heart started to heal on its own. He still has a hole in the heart. He's nine years old now, but it is no problem to him um, at all. But I, on the other hand, didn't start to heal and thrive so quickly. And at so many points on my mothering journey, I felt disempowered. You know, the lack of control, the lack of certainty, the lack of energy, and all of the strategies that had helped me feel strong, powerful, and capable before becoming a mum either weren't accessible anymore or just weren't as sustainable. So I returned to work after a year of, well, it was nearly a year, I think it was, he was about 10 months old when I returned back to work. And about three or four months later, I started to crash and burn and finally got diagnosed after lots and lots of investigations with adrenal fatigue. So I literally burnt out my adrenal system, my stress system, and it took me two years to recover fully from that. And I knew something had to change to help my recovery, but I didn't know what at the time. And I did lots to support my health and my body and my well-being. But I also tried to do a lot of things around how I how I lived my life. So I actually tried working part time. I tried to work in flexi time and none of those really helped me. So in desperation, I ended up stepping away from my career. But it was interesting because that was such a powerful insight because none of those were the answer. Because even when I stepped away from my work and took that out of the equation, I still felt stressed. I still felt guilt, mother's guilt. And I realized that actually something deeper needed to happen. You know, not only was there no manual to being a new mum, but there was no roadmap about how to do it. And the roadmap I had was an outdated one, which I hear from so many women. So I went on a journey to work out how I could thrive as a working mum and how I could be the kind of mother I wanted to be. 
whilst also doing work that lights me up and lead a life that I love. And that's what led to me giving birth to Wisdom for Working Mums. And I'm all about providing resources to help working mums realign their life so they can be more fulfilled, happy, content and relaxed, but without doing more. I help support my clients with coaching, psychological and leadership tools, really all about giving them strategies to take back control of their life, to live with more ease and less guilt. Because I'm seeing too many incredible women with their lights slowly dimming out. And for me, that's not only heartbreaking because I can feel the pain of being there myself, but it's just unacceptable. We need more women doing what makes them light up in the world so that they can have the impact that they want to have. And so in this episode, I wanted to share with you the strategies to have the freedom to flourish too. And as I say, stay tuned to the end as I have a special gift for you that will help you implement what we're covering. But before I dive in, could you do me that huge favor, please? Can you share this episode with two or three working mums that pop into your head as you listen? My mission is to support as many working mums on their journey as possible. And so I'd be grateful if you could support them by offering this free podcast. I hope it's useful for you. And if it is, I hope that you pass it on. And please consider rating and reviewing my show. Your review can help other people find my podcast. So you'll be helping another working mum find this resource. Plus, as you know, I love to go in and read them. So head over to the review section of where you listen to your podcast and let me know your feedback just like Sarah did, who left me this lovely review on iTunes. And she said, I love these podcasts. Nikki comes over so genuine and authentic, and she seems to write and speak from the heart. So it means I can engage with it genuinely too. I emailed her about something and she was so kind and thoughtful in her reply and advice. I never leave reviews, but I honestly think these honest podcasts speak to me. And I really love it when I hear from listeners of this show. So drop me an email. I always reply. And it's not my team that reply. It's genuinely me that you'll hear back from. So let's get back to finding the freedom to flourish. If you're part of my community, I know you'll understand the working mum dilemma. The working mum dilemma is that we're told that we can have it all. But if we try and do it all, we feel overwhelmed then feel guilty that we're somehow failing and it becomes a vicious cycle where we try harder and then beat ourselves up because we're not doing it as well as we think we should. And it takes us further away from that ability to flourish. And I'm using the word flourish, but actually what do I mean by that? So let's define it. In the dictionary, it's a verb and it talks about of a living organism. So it's about the ability to grow or develop in a healthy or vigorous way especially as the results of a particularly congenial environment. And it's also about to do well or to fare well, to prosper. It's about growing, succeeding, thriving. So a verb is if something flourishes, it's successful and it develops quickly and strongly. And that's what we're talking about here. It's about how do we as mums navigate this journey and feel like we're kind of doing it in a healthy way where we're prospering and thriving and we're growing as we do it. And when I'm talking about the freedom to flourish, freedom is described as the power or right to act, speak or think as one wants. But I think for me, my belief is that as mums, we have less freedom than we should have. And for me, the equation to flourish is flourish equals flow minus interference. So let me say that again. The ability to flourish is flourish equals flow minus interference. And in an ideal world, we would be able to show up as mums in a way that was just natural to us, that just felt authentic, that we could just do it on our own terms. And we would be in flow when we did that. Yes, we would have days that were difficult, but on the whole, we would be able to navigate it and just find a natural way and just flow with that. But unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal world. So it's flourish equals flow minus interference. And interference can be both external and internal. And there's a lot of external interference in motherhood. You know, our societal model of motherhood 
is really, really unhelpful. So you may have heard me say before, there's a lady called Dr. Sophie Brock out of Australia who um, teaches this sociology of motherhood. And she says that when we have a child, we become a mother and we do the role of mothering, but we do it in the paradigm of motherhood. And the paradigm of motherhood is deeply unhelpful in terms of the expectations of what the ideal mum is. And add to that, you know, the domestic load that that a lot of us carry and this double shift that if we're working in a, in a paid job outside the home, we then come home and do the domestic load and all the mental load that goes along with that. Adding to that, the pregnancy maternal maternity discrimination. So the statistics are now pretty damning around how many women are experiencing pregnancy and maternity dis- discrimination. Add into that maternal bias, add into that the pay gap and the motherhood penalty. And it's without a shadow of a doubt that the external interference for us as mums is pretty hard going. And there are some amazing people out there doing work to change the external landscape for us in terms of our kind of culture and systems, you know, the, the, the mother puckers that are really really doing great work around flexible working and the Jolie Breelys of this world, pregnant then screwed, that are really challenging pregnancy and maternity discrimination in the workplace and in our government organisations. But I, when I went through my burnout journey, I tried to focus on what could I control in this and the bit that I could control was my internal interference So that's not to take away that we've got these external systems that are really kind of challenging our ability to flourish. But there's also stuff that we do on the inside, you know, the beliefs that we hold, the unconscious rules that we take on, you know, the things that I thought I needed to do, the ways that I thought I needed to be, you know, those shoulds, I must, the ought tos. And what somebody brilliantly described as your itty bitty shitty committee, you know, that that internal judge and critic that tells you what you should be doing to be a good person, a good mother. The trouble is that the self-improvement world is at risk of making us believe that we're consciously choosing to hold ourselves back. And I don't believe that at at all, because that can just leave us kind of disappointed with ourselves and even feeling shame that we're failing. That kind of what's wrong with me? Why can't I just be happy? And I think it's important to remember in the context for millennia, women have struggled. You know, we want to be seen, but we shouldn't be heard. We t- we're told, don't be too sexy, but be pretty. Don't be too loud, but be empowered. Don't be too smart, but don't be dumb. Don't be too visible, but don't be shy. Don't be too rich, but you must be financially independent. And there's all these messages about, you know, we should always be there for our children, but having a career is a good thing and an immaculate house and an amazing body and always looking great, but don't sacrifice any time with your children to achieve these. And there's a brilliant book by a lady called Dr. Valerie Rain, who wrote The Patriarchal Stress Disorder. And she says this quote that they used to burn us at the stake. Now they just hand us the torches. And when I read that quote, it really struck me that from my own experience of burnout that I'd actually just set a light to myself. And that wasn't like, this is is really important. It's not to say that was my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. The system and the culture that we, we live in absolutely contributed to that. But there was stuff within my control that once I was aware of it, I could start to do things differently. And I believe that as we've been given more opportunities in the modern world, We're burning ourselves out by working harder and doing more to play the game to win. And my burnout journey taught me that I needed to play a different game, a game that I wanted to play, not a game that I kind of found myself in. And we're often controlled by these invisible forces. Known in coaching, you may have heard me talk about this before. I'm trained in something called systemic coaching, which looks at all of the systems that are around us, you know, that influence us. And in coaching, we talk about these being called systemic entanglements. And they're kind of the rules and beliefs that we take on to belong to the systems in our life. And I like to use the analogy that came from my mentor, John Whittington. And he talks about imagining yourself as a peacock with this beautiful tail full of feathers. And each feather is a system that you belong to, you know, your family of origin, your country of origin, your education, your religion, your friendship groups, your first employer, your family of procreation. And the list of systems goes on. 
But to be part of these systems, there are these unwritten rules to belong and to be safe. And those systemic forces influence us more than we know. And they tell us kind of what a good mother should be, what success should be, what happiness should be, and a million other shoulds. And it can be really empowering to gain awareness of those unconscious dynamics and entanglements because what we're not aware of controls us, but what we're aware of empowers us with choice. And that's when you get the freedom to flourish. And I believe that there's a real trap of being a working mother. And it's often these hidden traps that keep us feeling like we're constantly falling short, that leave us feeling kind of frustrated or disappointed or disillusioned, even lead to us becoming kind of angry and anxious and tired and overwhelmed. And it's kind of like an invisible prison. And it's only when you hit the walls of the prison do we finally see that we're in the prison. And I absolutely got a glimpse of it during my burnout experience. And you've probably heard me mention it, you know, getting trapped between this paradigm of trying to be the ideal worker, but also trying to be the ideal mother. And those two paradigms in themselves can be almost prisons because they have such expectations linked to them that are pretty unhealthy in themselves. But you combine the two and they collide. And it really, in my mind, leaves us kind of as this is this unconscious prisoner. And it starts way back, you know, the, the pieces of this puzzle kind of start really from the age of seven with girls where we're, we're unconsciously conditioned to perfect, to perform, to please and to prove, to gain our self-worth. You know, the cultural rules of be a good girl, you know, do well in school, work hard in your career, you know, get married, buy a house, raise children, own nice things, take nice holidays. And if you do that, it'll lead to this kind of promised land of happiness. But I speak to so many women and I had this experience that I followed those cultural rules and ticked the box. And I found myself in a place where I was really unhappy. And I kind of felt wrong for it. I felt ungrateful. I felt that there was something wrong for me that I just wasn't, you know, doing a gratitude practice enough to be happy enough with my life. But actually, my burnout experience taught me that that promised land actually can leave us almost becoming a prisoner in our own, in our own kind of world. And they act as our prison guards. You know, there's a, and put this in a a kind of box, a box of being a good mother, the box of being a good daughter, the box of being a good partner, the box of being a good employee, the box of being a good boss, the box of being a good working mother, the box of being a good stay at home mother. No wonder we lose ourselves. And as I said, this equation is flourishing is flow minus interference. And all of these conditioning can just be interference that get in the way of us being in our flow. And I believe that change will happen for us to flourish when the external interference, so all those social barriers and the internal interference, those personal barriers are removed And we absolutely need to continue to fight and challenge all those social barriers. But I want to empower you with the tools to focus on what's within your control and kind of respectfully or even maybe disrespectfully letting go of the dynamics and entanglements that might be trapping you. And Dr. Valerie Rain calls it kind of a jailbreak. So if we assume that some of the boxes that you're in aren't helping you to flourish. Now, depending on who you are, your upbringing, the systems you've belonged to and your life and privilege, you'll have different types of boxes that might um, stop you from flourishing. You might have a few and some might have many, but just assume that there might be some boxes in your life that aren't helping you to flourish. And it's really based on the fact that the rules that worked for you and the first part of your life are rarely the rules that will help you to thrive in this season of your life, this season of motherhood, and particularly working motherhood. And so I just want you to really reflect on, are the strategies you're relying on the wrong strategies? You see, that was part of my experience. I learned that actually I needed to be strong, independent, clever, focused and driven to do well in life. And they absolutely contributed to my success. They made me responsible. They made me capable. They made me really productive and practical. But they also made me really, really tired, particularly when I added children into the mix. And they moved me further and further away from the person I wanted to be. 
And so what I had to do was remake my life from the inside out. And that's what I invite you to do, to just survey the prison that you're living in. And I say that tongue in cheek, you know, you won't see it as a prison that may not resonate, but just survey your life. And what we often do, I love the analogy of, you know, are we going to do grand designs versus 60 minute makeover? And if you're familiar with those programs, the 60 minute makeover is a TV program where a crew would go in and spend 60 minutes revamping a house, painting it, changing some of the furnishings in 60 minutes. And, you know, they would give it a lick of paint, they would tinker with it, and it would look, you know, fresher, absolutely. And that's sometimes what we end up doing with our lives. We think, oh, if only I was more productive, or if only I was slimmer, or if only I was a bit more confident, that would make my life better. But really, we're just tinkering around the edges versus the grand designs. And if you're familiar with that program, it's about people that take on these kind of magnificent projects to rebuild a kind of a home um, from the ground up and really think about how they want to live. And that's what I invite you to do, to just think, are we just tinkering here? And Dr. Valerie Rain in her book talks about, are we just decorating our prison cell? And I, for my journey, it was about remaking my life from the inside out. And it's not about knocking down my home, but it was about carefully surveying it. And it wasn't about kind of setting boxes on fire that were kind of trapping me. I really needed to explore them. And it's almost like you're trying to change the engine while you're keeping the bus going. I really needed to slow down and I needed to create these kind of moments or intervals of possibility. Like what was possible? What could be possible for my life to feel more in flow? things to feel with more ease, for me to feel happier. And it was about starting to listen to the whispers of kind of like my body and my spirit. I was so used to listening to my head and the chatter in my head about what I should be doing, but it was about slowing down. And what I found was they were trying to communicate with me, but I couldn't hear them over the busyness and the noise of my life. I had to kind of lower the volume enough to listen to the music of my own life, not just the chatter of my mind and the outside world. I had to think about what would bring me more pleasure? What would bring me more ease? What would bring me more happiness? And what did my inner voice, that deep inner voice that sat behind my inner critic, behind my inner judge, that inner voice of kind of intuition or gut instinct tell me. And I invite you to do the same about starting to recognize your needs, starting to recognize and meet them. It's almost like tracking your joy and pleasure and connecting the dots to like your like deep, authentic desires, not what the world's told you. And if you do that, what you might start to notice is like your prison walls, that voice that says, that's not possible, that's beyond my reach. And you'll start to notice perhaps your prison guards that tell you the rules that keep you safe by complying and belonging, the voices that say, you can't do that, or what will people think? And what I've done is I've done some of the heavy lifting for you in this. I've really distilled the journey I went on to recover from my burnout and learn to flourish as a working mum into a guide. And it's a framework that I use to support other women too. And I've developed a five-step approach to finding your freedom to flourish. And the first step is the power of your personal values. And it's about discovering your personal values to give you a strong sense of your internal compass in life. And if you've not done work around your values, oh my gosh, this is something that I think is probably one of the most powerful things we can do as human beings, but particularly as mothers, as we navigate often conflicting demands and decisions in life. And it's about uncovering your core values. And these are really the foundation on which everything else sits. And there's a famous kind of quote that says, you know, we're climbing the ladder of success to realize it's against the wrong wall. Well, knowing your values helps you to make sure you put it against the right wall and you climb it in a really grounded way. 
And if if we use the analogy of like redesigning your home, we know that strong foundations are critical to kind of building a home. And it's the same for, for us as humans. And values are not really our morals or our needs or our wants. They're deeper than that. And they're not physical things. And there's no right or wrong to values. You can't, they can't be judged. They're almost like our heart's deepest desires, how we want to be, how we want we want to walk in this world and relate in the world and, and what we want to stand for. And it's not what the world has told us that we should have. And I love the quote by Owen Thomas that says, and every day the world will drag you by the hand yelling, this is important and this is important and this is important. You need to worry about this and this. And each day it's up to you to yank your hand back, put it on your heart and say, no, no, This is what's important. And I believe that's what values enable us to do. They're really the way that we can walk that path. And step two is about awakening your needs, which is all about identifying your needs to help you feel energized and powerful and centered so you can have more impact in your life. Needs are the things that help us feel grounded and well. And without them, we tend to feel grumpy or even kind of unhealthy, unsafe, and and even unwell. And needs are different to design desires. And if you think about it in terms of redesigning your room, redesigning your home, kind of your needs are what rooms do you need in your in your home? But often we forget how to know what we need. And we forget this because we've often learnt we just need to please and we need to let go of our own needs to please others. And I love the quote from Glennon Doyle in her book, Untamed. And if you've not read that book, I'd highly recommend it. And she says, mothers have martyred themselves in their children's names since the beginning of time. We have lived as if she who disappears the most loves the most. We've been conditioned to prove our love by slowly ceasing to exist. What a terrible burden for children to bear, to know that they are the reason their mother stopped living. This is why Young suggested There's no greater burden on a child than the unlived life of a parent. So getting in touch with our needs can be tricky as a mum. But if we can, that absolutely is what supports us to flourish because it's kind of like a fundamental, our base needs to be, need to be met before we can even think about moving up to that next level. The third step in this process is about becoming a boundary boss. And this is about how to set gracious and powerful boundaries in your life to protect your time, your energy and your health. And boundaries are really guidelines or rules or maybe limits that you create to identify for others and for sometimes for yourself what's reasonable, safe and permissible ways for them to behave around you. And drawing healthy boundaries really protects your time your energy, your health, and your emotional safety. And it's crucial for flourishing. But often it can be really difficult to communicate our boundaries and actually to even identify them in the first place and then communicate them. And even if we tend to intend to communicate them, we can often sabotage ourselves. I know that was a massive trap I fell into. I kind of knew in my head the boundaries I wanted to put in place. But when I went to communicate them, I thought that people were going to judge me for them, think that I was being selfish or rude or disrespectful. But if we don't communicate our boundaries, we often become depletful, resentful, needy, or even passive aggressive. Our emotions, when we hit those emotions, they're often a sign that we've not upheld a boundary that we need. And it's just recognizing it's not your job to make everybody comfortable, but we need to respect ourselves first by putting boundaries in place that enable other people to respect us. And we can roll mod that for our children by doing it. The fourth step is about the power of you. And this is about uncovering your personal style and your innate strengths that help you to navigate the demands of life with more ease. And one key way of doing this is about knowing your mothering style. And that kind of draws out your personality preferences and traits. So just as every house has its own decor and style, 
every mother does too. We can, as I've talked about, we can get caught up in this myth of being the perfect mother. Every mother has strengths and struggles, but we can tend to compare our struggles with other mothers' strengths and it just leaves us feeling short. And that's why knowing your strengths, knowing your personal style can be so powerful. And it's based, as I said, on your personality type. And it's about understanding yourself, how you operate, what your preferences are. And it explains really why you enjoy some aspects of motherhood and not others. And it can help you be more of yourself in motherhood. In episode 75 of this podcast show, I did a whole episode on this topic. It was called Discovering Your Mothering Style, How to Find the Freedom to Flourish. If you've not let you listened, definitely worth checking it out. I'll put a link in the show notes because what it enables you to do is trust your innate strengths, be more realistic and accepting of your struggles. And it enables you to free yourself from the stress and guilt of feeling like you're not measuring up to this kind of perfect ideal. It helps you learn how to recharge and protect your energy and really just navigate the demands of life with more ease. So I really recommend checking out that episode, episode 75. And the fifth and final step is about lifestyle alignment. And this is about assessing and aligning your life to take focused action to shift you in the direction of flourishing. And it's all about really identifying the micro habits and rituals that can shift you in that right direction so that you can be more in flow and have that freedom to flourish. It's about supporting you to be at your best so that you can manage your energy and your mind and connect to your body and unhook from that cultural treadmill and conditioning that can suck us in and really empowers you with a conscious choice. And those five steps are all about giving you your freedom back, giving you your sovereignty so that you can belong to yourself first, so that you can almost be the queen of your own realm, so you can connect to that inner authority and trust and integrity, so that you're no longer imprisoned by that conditioning So you're empowered to consciously choose and it's sourcing it from within so that you're connecting to your kind of inner power. So it's creating a home that you can live in with freedom because it's not where we're from, but where we belong that's important. And if you can find that within yourself, oh my God, that's where the real power lies. And it's really becoming a leader in your own life as a woman, as a mother, And so it might involve, you know, using the analogy of the home, you might not need to knock down some walls or it might involve putting up some walls. It might involve moving house or it might involve rebuilding your house. But it's about becoming aware of what are the changes that you can make that are within your control that help you to flourish. And I've created for you this freedom to flourish free five-day guide. And it's my open arm invitation to welcome yourself back to what will truly help you to flourish as a mother. And you can find it over at wisdomforworkingmums.co.uk forward slash freedom. So that's wisdom for F-O-R working mums, M-U-M-S dot co dot UK forward slash freedom. And each day for five days, you'll receive a bite-sized email with a quick and actionable tip around those five strategies that I've talked about. The Freedom to Flourish toolkit includes the power of your personal values. So how to discover your personal values to give you that strong sense of your internal compass in life. It includes awaken your needs, helping you to identify your needs to help you feel energized, powerful and centered so you can have more impact in your life. It includes how to become a boundary boss. So how to set gracious and powerful boundaries in your life to protect your time, energy and health. And it also includes the power of you, how to uncover your personal style and innate strengths, helping you, as I talked about, to navigate the demands of life with more ease. And finally, it includes how to align your life. So how to assess and align your life to take focused action, to shift in that right direction of flourishing. And it helps you identify the micro habits and rituals that will shift you gently into that right direction. So if you want some free practical tools to start the journey to flourish as a working mum, check out the Freedom to Flourish support kit. So it's at wisdom for 
workingmums.co.uk forward slash freedom. And as I say, it's completely free. And each day for five days, you'll get a quick and actionable email that by the end of the five days, you'll feel more clear on what's important and what your priorities are. You'll understand the things you need in place to feel empowered and you can make tweaks in your life that help you to flourish and thrive. But I really hope you find those five steps help you to find your freedom to flourish. And as always, I'd love to hear any insights you've got from this episode. So drop me a note on social media or email me. I genuinely would love to hear from me. So thanks so much for hanging out with me in this episode. Could you do me that huge favour, please? Can you share this episode with two or three working mums that might pop into your head as you listen? As I've said, my mission is to support as many working mums on their journey as possible. And so I'd be so grateful if you could share it with anyone that you think might find it useful. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, take care. If you've enjoyed this episode of Wisdom for Working Mums, please share it on social media and with your friends and family. I'd love to connect with you too. So if you head over to wisdomforworkingmums.co.uk, you'll find a link on how to do this. And if you love the show and really want to support it, please go to iTunes, write a review and subscribe. You'll be helping another working mum find this resource too. Thanks so much for listening.